thanks for thanks the organizer uh, organizer for giving me the opportunity to present my work today. So today I'm going to talk about one of the papers of my uh, PhD uh, that I did at the University of Bordeaux and the Inray Institute. And uh, it was about uh, the maintenance of quantitative uh, genetic uh, variation in populations of uh, maritime pine. So as uh, you all know, most complex traits show substantial heritable variation uh, in natural populations. But uh, how evolutionary forces and um, uh, interact to maintain such variation remains a long-standing uh, dilemma in uh, evolutionary biology and quantitative genetics. Mutation and genetic drift have uh, straightforward uh, roles. Uh, mutation generates variation, while genetic drift eliminates it. Uh, but the effect of uh, natural selection is more complicated. Uh, stabilizing selection is expected to uh, deplete quantitative genetic variation in uh, natural populations, which is shown here on the graph of fitness as a function of the phenotypes. Selection, symbolized uh, by the arrows, remove, uh, removes individuals with the most extreme phenotypes, uh, thereby reducing quantitative genetic variation. In contrast, various uh, evolutionary processes can maintain uh, greater than neutral uh, quantitative genetic variation in uh, natural populations and are grouped under the umbrella term of uh, balancing selection. This is, for instance, the case of spatially and temporally fluctuating uh, environments in which the phenotypes removed by uh, the natural selection uh, in a given population are not the same across the different uh, environments in which this population occurs. But uh, while there has been extensive theoretical work on how quantitative genetic variation is maintained within populations, uh, empirical studies remain rare. Uh, forest trees present specific features that make them particularly uh, interesting for the study of evolutionary mechanisms. Crossing uh, have lifetime reproductive output and long generation time. They often have large effective uh, population sizes and with distribution that cover a wide range of environmental conditions. Um, genetic differentiation at very small uh, geographical scales have been repeatedly detected in forest trees and it seems that most quantitative genetic variation is within populations. A few empirical studies have uh, investigated how quantitative genetic variation is uh, maintained within forestry populations. Higher quantitative genetic variation in uh, spatially heterogeneous environments due to the joint effect of gene flow and varying selection pressures was found uh, for growth in, a, in logical pine by Yeman and Jarvis. And lower quantitative genetic variation in harsh uh, environments, probably due to um, strong selection pressures, was found uh, for functional and growth traits uh, in a neotropical oak. In our case, we aimed uh, to test three competing but not mutually exclusive uh, hypotheses. The first hypothesis was that the most admixed populations have higher quantitative genetic variation due to uh, integration from other gene pools. A gene pool being a genetic cluster that cannot be differentiated on the basis of neutral genetic markers. Our second hypothesis was that quantitative genetic variation is lower in populations from harsher environments so potentially populations experiencing stronger selection. And our last hypothesis was that quantitative genetic variation is higher in populations from spatially heterogeneous environments. And importantly, the last two uh, hypotheses require the action of natural selection, while the first does not. Therefore, we may expect the last two hypotheses to be mostly supported for fitness-related traits while the first may uh, apply uniformly to all traits. 
So for that, we use uh, maritime pine uh, as model species, uh, um, a wind pollinated and long lived conifer with a large ecological and economical importance in uh, North, uh, Northern Africa and Western Europe. It has a very strong population genetic structure with uh, six main gene pools that have been described so far, and with some uh, admixture suggesting uh, gene flow among gene pools. And like for uh, other wind pollinated pines, pollen dispersal kernels in uh, maritime pine are highly leptopiotic, which means that most gene flow occurs at very small spatial uh, distances but that some uh, rare uh, dispersal events are likely to connect uh, highly distant populations. Regarding the experimental design, we used uh, three clonal common gardens located in the Atlantic region and in which uh, 33 populations were planted. For each tree, we had uh, height data in the three common garden and at uh, two different ages in one common garden. And we also had uh, height data from a partially independent sovereign trial that we then used in a validation analysis. We also had two phenology related traits, the date and duration of bud burst, and two functional traits, which, uh, which is the isotope discrimination, so a proxy of the water use efficiency and the specific leaf area. Uh, the environment at the, the location of the population was characterized by the climatic topographic and soil conditions at one kilometer resolution. And uh, we also had genomic data as the clones were genotyped for about uh, 5,000 SNPs. So with that, we calculated the two scores of population admissions for each population, but Today, I'm just going to talk about the index A, which is the proportion of ancestry from pro-main gene pools. We also calculated four indexes of environmental heterogeneity. So for that, we summarize the climatic soil and topographic conditions in a principal component analysis. And then we projected specially the first two principal com component scores of the PCA within a 20 kilometer and 1.6 kilometer radius around each population location. And then the indexes of environmental heterogeneity correspond to the variance of the cell values within each area. And we also had two indexes of climate harshness. So an index related to severe cold events uh, calculated over the period 1901 and 1950, and a drought index uh, calculated over the same period. The uh, eight phenotypic traits were modeled with uh, standard quantitative genetic models in which the phenotypes are expressed uh, with, uh, as a function of varying intercepts that account for the common garden design. And uh, the varying intercepts of the clones are drawn from a normal distribution of variant sigma squared CP, which is specific to each population, and in fact, which stands for uh, the quantitative genetic variation within each population. And uh, sigma CP can then be expressed as a function of XP, XP being one of the potential drivers I talked about just before. So the indexes related to population and mixture, environmental heterogeneity, and climate harshness. So here you will see the credible intervals, uh, which stands for uh, the association between the quantitative genetic variation within each population and each of the potential drivers on the x-axis. And the different colors stand for the different traits, blue for the functional ones, green for the phenology-related ones, and orange for height. So, all the credible intervals of the population and mixture indexes crossed zero. So we consider that there was no association between population and mixture and uh, the quantitative genetic variation uh, within each population, within populations for any trait. 
Uh, regarding the climate harshness indexes, we found a lower quantitative genetic variation for height in populations subjected to severe cold events. Uh, and uh, it can be noted that uh, there was an association uh, in uh, Bordeaux in the French Common Garden when the trees were 25 months old, but not anymore when the trees were older. And uh, last, we did not find any association between our indexes related to environmental heterogeneity and the quantitative genetic variation within each population. And this is shown here for the environmental heterogeneity within a 20 kilometer radius area, but it was the same for the smaller areas. So coming back to our uh, initial hypothesis, uh, <clears throat> we did not find any association between population and mixture and uh, the quantitative genetic variation within uh, populations. So it suggests that uh, there is no effect of uh, integration from the gene pools. Uh, as we found lower quantitative genetic variation in populations subjected to severe cold events, our results support uh, the hypothesis that uh, quantitative genetic uh, variation may be lower in, pro in uh, populations uh, from harsher environments. Uh, environment to potentially experience some stronger selection pressures. And uh, last, our results do not support uh, our uh, hypothesis related to environmental heterogeneity. So it may stem either from a true lack of effect of the environmental heterogeneity uh, on uh, quantitative genetic variation of the threat studied here. But it may uh, also originate from uh, uh, the inappropriate spatial scale of a study or, um, or the insufficient environmental heterogeneity around the selected population. So importantly, we further validated uh, our results on a partially independent uh, high data set from another provenance trial in which we had access to the additive genetic variant. And in fact, we found exactly the same results. And uh, also, as we only found association for height and not for the other threats, our results support the hypothesis that natural selection primarily defeats quantitative genetic variation of threats that are most directly related to weakness. And I think that the study gives insight into which population may be able uh, to adapt faster to uh, new climatic conditions. Because low quantitative genetic variation in areas subject to, to cold events may both uh, reflect strong adaptation to local conditions, but may also hamper the adaptive potential of populations under new climate. And with that, I would like to thank all my co authors, and in particular, uh, my two advisors during my uh, thesis, uh, Marta Binto Garzan and Santiago Gonzalez Martinez. And thanks uh, uh, for your attention. Uh, I will be happy to uh, take some questions.